Hey everyone, Marcy here from the Wild Tribe. I wanted to talk to you guys today about the connection between inflammation and weight gain. So some of you guys might not even know that there is a connection between inflammation and weight gain, but if you think about it, it makes sense because when your body is in a state of inflammation, that means that your system is going haywire. So other processes might not be working the way they should, like your metabolism. So I pulled up some research and I just wanted to run through it really quick with you guys. So we'll start here. This is an article from MyFitnessPal. Think about the last time you got a bruise. The blood and fluid that rushed in to create a purplish swollen area is the definition of inflammation. That is how good inflammation is supposed to happen. But sometimes inflammation can get us into trouble. An example, an allergy when our immune system overreacts to harmless foods. Think peanut butter, shellfish, eggs. Poor habits like eating an unhealthy diet, not exercising enough, and consuming too much sugar can contribute to a bad type of inflammation called chronic inflammation. So we're gonna skip to this section, read about what chronic inflammation is and how that can be linked to weight gain. So if fat cells can contribute to chronic inflammation, then it's reasonable to expect that weight gain, especially in the form of fat tissue, also contributes to chronic inflammation. As we gain weight, some fat cells expand beyond their capacity while trying to do their job storing our extra calories as fat. When this happens, they turn on and add to the inflammation already present in our bodies. At this point, these cells aren't just fat storage warehouses. They're like little inflammation factories sending out signals to activate the immune system. Losing weight allows the fat system to shrink back to a more normal size and turn off, turns off signals that trigger chronic inflammation. And then here it talks about a study that shows chronic inflammation is linked to weight gain. So now um, that we understand the difference between good and bad inflammation, I would like to take you to another article. This is about how you can test what foods may cause inflammation for you with an elimination diet. So personally, I got my gallbladder out in last May. And since then, I've been noticing that I have certain reactions to foods that I didn't used to have reactions to. So my gastroenterologist put me on a elimination diet. And an elimination diet basically is what it sounds like. You eliminate certain foods from your body and then you slowly add them back in and keep a diary and take note of what those foods do to your body. So let's go back to this article and read about how healthy food can cause inflammation. When you eat foods that don't work for your chemistry, your histamine and cortisol levels start to rise. This means you will have short-term water weight gain from this heightened histamine response and long-term fat storage from the raised cortisol. That is so important, guys. If you eat a food that doesn't work for your body, that means that you are more likely to store fat than if you were to eat foods that don't make your body um, go into haywire. So elevated cortisol levels also mean that you're more likely to be stressed out and this will negatively affect your hormones. These constantly fluctuating hormones will attack your master gland of metabolism, your thyroid. To move on from this, um, the next question would be, how do you figure out which foods don't work for you? And this website, which I'll link in the description box, um, has a really good guide for figuring out which foods might not work for you. Here are some examples of um, ways that your body is trying to tell you which foods don't work for you. Bloating after a meal, constipation, 3 p.m. energy dip, body aches, aches and pains, irritability, depression, hormonal issues. So just to kind of tie this all up, your body is super sensitive to the foods that we eat and certain foods that you eat may or may not be causing inflammation in your body. 
That inflammation may cause a number of different triggers, but one of those could be weight gain. And in order to make sure that your cells are storing fat properly, you must make sure that you know which foods work for your body and which foods do not. And the best way to do that is through an elimination diet. So you can look online for guides to elimination diets, or if you need more guidance, you can go to your gastroenterologist or your doctor. And hopefully this helps. Um, I know that personally, since I've been doing my elimination diet, I have lost weight because I'm paying attention to what my body needs and what it wants. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps and we will see you next time. Bye.